For some time, the talk of multiple guided missile launchers given to Ukraine has permeated the media. As any idea, it needed time to actually be put in practice. So sometime in June, the first HIMARS launchers have indeed found their way to the battlefields in Ukraine. June 24th marked the first time their usage in Ukraine was publicly unveiled. But for the, all the talk about them, are HIMARS systems really going to be a game changer? Well, that really depends on how they're used. This video will try to explain just that. Multiple rocket launchers are a staple of modern warfare, and you can try out a plethora of modern weapons on your own in War Thunder, a game sponsoring this video. It's the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. You can also fly jets, helicopters and even command ships. The game spans a period of over a hundred years, from pre-World War II stuff to cutting-edge modern systems. There are over 2,000 tanks, airplanes, helicopters and ships to enjoy. And they're so detailed. Look at this, they're modeled down to individual components. It's like I really am in an Abrams tank, a Leo 2, the A-10 Warthog, you name it. I love the format, I'd say battles are usually up to 20 minutes long and action-packed. I love when I get to outmaneuver enemies, there are planes flying over ground battles, a combined arms experience but in a PvP environment. And the damage models are frankly great, vehicles suffer actual damage to components and crew. War Thunder can be played on PC and consoles. And there's a big free bonus pack waiting for you if you register using my link, to be found in the video description below. You'll get multiple premium vehicles, premium account access, boosters and more. Try it out! On to our video. While the media is usually just using the name HIMARS, what's really important is the following name, GMLRS, or Guided Multiple Launch Rocket System, or even more precisely, M30 and M31 family of GMLRS rockets. While multiple launch rocket systems of old were basically carpet bombing weapons, today's systems are long-range snipers. The M30 and M31 are satellite guided rockets or better said missiles which can be fired from both HIMARS and older MLRS launchers and achieve precision hits at and over 70 kilometers away. Missiles manufacturer regularly claims that its range exceeds 70 kilometers. A US official stated a 50 mile reach in one briefing on Ukraine. But the US DoD acquisition report document is perhaps most exact, stating demonstrated ranges. As changes in flight due to guidance corrections and atmosphere conditions may influence actual range, its practical range is likely anywhere between 70 and 80 kilometers. One type of usage which Ukraine is unlikely to do is attacks on targets within Russian borders. The US famously did not want to sell the even longer ranged missiles, but the usage issue goes further. Ukraine had to promise not to attack Russian soil, even with GMLR missiles. If it breaks that promise, who knows if the US would continue supplying it with missiles. The reason for that is twofold. Attacks on Russian soil might broaden the scope of conflict and eventually entangle NATO into combat. But the other reason is perhaps even more important. If Russian territory gets attacked regularly, then the sentiment of the Russian people to the war might change. And if it changes enough, then Putin might very well decide the climate is ripe for him to start mass mobilization one that could, in such a socio-political environment, be supported by enough Russians. Ultimately, Russia might then be able to successfully enlarge its force in Ukraine by a factor of two or three. That would be a very unfortunate chain of events for Ukraine. Anyway, HIMARS is basically just a truck that holds a pod with six missiles. When the missiles are fired, the whole pod is replaced with a new full pod. Older MLRS system is basically the same, only with the capability to use two such pods at once. MLRS is heavier and tracked though. Ukraine is getting six of those older systems too, in addition to US supplied HIMARS. HIMARS is a better choice for Ukraine due to the ease of its logistics. Tracked vehicles require greater support. On the other hand, NATO has some of the tracked variants stored as surplus, so those could still be sent to Ukraine in greater numbers in the future. But as mentioned, it's all about the missiles themselves. The US Army doesn't really use older unguided rockets for its launchers anymore. For a decade now, it has only been using the GPS-guided missiles. The two missile types sent to Ukraine differ in range and warhead. 
The M31, one with the longer reach, has a unitary explosive warhead. It detonates upon impact. The other has a warhead with almost 200,000 pre-made fragments to disperse over an area after the warhead detonates 30 feet above the ground. The pre-fragmented warhead is used by Ukraine to attack soft skin targets out in the open. Given the fairly low number of systems available, those are likely not enemy soldier formations, but high importance targets in the rear, such as command vehicles, communication vehicles, air defense sites, towed artillery sites, field truck formations, open depots and so on. Anything that's basically not armored or contains fragile sensors and antennas. Injury or damage radius for such a warhead would be around 600 feet. The variant with the unitary warhead is used on buildings such as warehouses and other hard roof depots, as well as on high-priced and lightly armored targets, such as enemy self-propelled artillery batteries. Targeting such locations can cause a much greater effect on the enemy than destroying frontline targets. When supplies are partially destroyed, when communication and command nodes are disrupted, those can all cause frontline offensives to be postponed or cancelled outright, impacting not just one infantry company or tank platoon, but entire brigades at once. The M31 warhead is quite potent. To give you an idea, it sits between a small diameter bomb and a 155mm artillery round. Very roughly speaking, two HIMARS launchers could deliver similar destruction as an F-16 fighter dropping eight small diameter smart bombs. Most famously, Ukraine has been using its new missiles on various warehouses and depots of the Russian military, trying to impact the enemy's supply flow. The first series of attacks in late June and early July saw fairly long-range usage, sometimes close to the maximum range of the system. Those instances meant Ukraine had positioned the launchers perhaps just 5 to 10 kilometers away from the front line. Such attacks were quite risky for Ukraine, as Russian airborne sensors could have detected the launchers. Indeed, Russian side did claim it destroyed seven launchers so far, while the US said no launchers were lost. Incidentally, US officials are stating the US is very carefully tracking HIMARS systems all the way to the battlefield, whatever that implies. But in most other instances, distances from frontline to targets meant launchers were usually positioned 20 to 30 kilometers behind the frontline. That's perhaps the most important ability the GM-LRS rounds bring. The ability to hit important targets behind enemy lines, yet still do it from fairly safe locations. With so few launcher systems available, it's absolutely crucial for Ukraine to be able to preserve them. The US did say they are considering sending even more systems in the future. These batches where four are sent at a time are done due to training requirements and limitations. It's plausible that if and when dozens of launchers become available, Ukraine will broaden their use, either going for even more distant targets, entailing riskier use, or dedicating some launchers to cover the actual front line. The US recently announced it is sending 1000 precision 155mm rounds for artillery guns. Soon the frontline attacks will be served by those. Given the bigger numbers of artillery guns and much shorter ranges required, guided gun rounds are certainly a much more sensible solution. Compared to an unguided artillery shell, those are much more precise. The precision of GM-LRS rounds is roughly on par with the Excalibur round, usually stated to be accurate within just a few meters. If the enemy happens to have a GPS signal jammer near a potential target, which is not going to be often due to sheer number of targets available, then the incoming missile may lose the GPS part of its guidance during the last several miles to the target. The effect would be similar to a JDAM bomb having to rely only on its inertial navigation system, and not on GPS. Errors would be greater, but still acceptable. Given that even a 155mm artillery round is still dangerous when it lands 30 meters away, the even bigger GM-LRS warhead would be even more dangerous. Of course, there are various threats to HIMARS attacks. Some are direct threats to the launchers. Launches without prior aerial sensor scans, so Ukrainians can be sure there aren't any Russian aircraft or drones around, are extra risky, especially with launches done near the front. Since Ukraine doesn't always have the ability to scan the nearby skies, many of the HIMARS launches have been done during nighttime. As most of the Russian drones still lack potent thermal cameras, suitable for long-range night work, such use brought some safety to HIMARS units. But that also means only non-time-critical targets could be hit. 
if in the future relocatable targets are to be hit, then more of the daytime launches may also be necessary. Indeed, recently we did see footage of even daytime launches, possibly suggesting that even if Russia is managing to destroy some launchers, the pace of incoming new launchers from the US more than compensates for those possible losses. Also, most launches must be quick, without the opportunity to reload and do a follow-up strike. Even though a HIMARS launcher can be reloaded within 10 minutes, staying that long in one place after firing might be too dangerous. Besides drones that could spot the launch location due to the rocket motor burn, there are counter-battery radars which can track missiles in flight and help calculate where they came from, so it's imperative for HIMARS to move away as quickly as possible after firing. It's possible that in certain super high threat situations it's prudent not to stay long enough to fire all six missiles, but to scoot away after just two or three missiles have been fired. HIMARS missiles fly a relatively predictable ballistic glide trajectory, especially if the launcher is fairly near the front line, so its missiles are tracked while in the ascending part of their flight, which is closer to a ballistic trajectory of an artillery round and easier for artillery radars to geolocate. Given that missiles aren't that small, they can be tracked, not only by counter-artillery radars, but also air defense radars. Ukraine has allegedly tried using older Soviet BM-27 launchers in concert with HIMARS. Those have certain rockets that can theoretically reach up to 70 kilometers, but they're very imprecise. Still, allegedly, they're fired to be decoys, so the Russian air defenses have a harder time singling out the dangerous HIMARS missiles within many missiles fired. For all the non-flattering media texts about Russian Panzer air defense systems, there are still potent weapons for defense against GM-LRS targets. They have been known to take down rockets in Syria. While there is no information against GM-LRS, they are bound to be intercepting some. But the issue for Russia is one of numbers. There are over a hundred important targets behind the front line. There are hundreds of points that could use such air defense systems near the front line to keep Ukrainian drones at bay. There will simply not be air defense systems always alert and available everywhere. And sometimes if, for example, two HIMARS launchers are used for an attack, a single Panzer, even if active and prepared, in the right place at the right time, may not be enough. It's more likely than not that most GM-LRS missiles would go through the defenses most of the time. There has been at least one instance where four launchers have been used in concert, launching two dozen missiles at one target. It's not known how many missiles are being sent to Ukraine. The US itself has roughly 55,000 GM-LRS rounds. Current missiles come from US stocks, but in the future that will likely change to contracts to Lockheed Martin to make missiles destined for Ukraine. While NATO will not deplete their stocks considerably, sending a few tens of thousands of missiles, its plausible thousands might be sent throughout this year. Indeed, it's likely Ukrainian launchers will get severely underutilized. If those fired only a single salvo of six missiles per day, then Ukraine already spent some 4,000 missiles so far. Assuming 20 launchers use missiles at the same rate until the end of the year, Ukraine will have wanted to use some 20,000 guided missiles by the New Year's. That's highly unlikely to happen, as NATO has stopped short of sending over a third of their Javelin and Stinger stockpiles, it's likely it won't send a comparable ratio of important weapons such as GMLRS missiles either. But even for the entire 2023, it's unlikely Ukraine will ever have enough missiles to fire off more than one salvo per launcher, per day. So the reason for the excessive number of launchers sent is likely for attrition purposes and to be able to cover the entire front with rapid reaction firepower. Still, a few dozen launchers and thousands of missiles will not really change the course of the war. To be truly effective, greater numbers are needed. Of course, to be really effective against targets behind enemy lines, weapons such as GMLRS need good and timely target information. And that's an aspect of the usage in war in Ukraine that's perhaps even more important than the weapon itself. But we will deal with that topic in our very next video, to come out by the end of the week. So stay tuned! Before we go, remember that you can play War Thunder for free and enjoy an ample bonus pack featuring multiple premium vehicles, premium account access, boosters and other stuff. You just have to register using my link, which you can find below the video. I love War Thunder, so give it a try!